My guest today is Christina Aldan. Christina, how are you? Hi, doing well, thanks. Thanks for being on my show again. It's been a while. Thanks for having me. It's been a while since I've seen you in person. Yeah. No, it's nice to be in person. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Absolutely. What are we going to talk about today? Uh, today I want to talk about brain performance and memory. Yeah. This is a, you're kind of an expert on this. Well, I wouldn't say I'm an expert, but I have a lot of anecdotal evidence and, well, and stories. That you shared in front share. of thousands of people yeah. on stage as well. That's, <laughs> that's, that's an expert true. in my book. That's true. No, <laughs> thank you. Thank you. And uh, it's been going really well. In fact, my, my keynote has been, been really well received. In fact, I do a matching workshop where we actually get to practice how to improve our memories. We, oh. How we encode, how we store, and how we retrieve our memories. Tell me a little about that. What, what, what kind of things do you cover when you talk about this? So, you know, the thing about it is uh, when we used to think that our brains couldn't learn new things or create new brain cells, and in fact we can, right. and we used to think that our brains were left brain and right brain, we were talking about that earlier. Yeah, it works as a metaphor, but you're saying physically, it's not true. That's right. Physiologically, we actually store different bits of data in chunks, and we have six different memory subsystems that we store things in. So we have a memory for short-term memory, mm -hmm. and um, that's where the, the new information collides with the old information, and you have about two to 18 seconds. I heard somebody say you have about two to six seconds to, to process information in your short-term memory, which seems like a really short yeah. time. <laughs> um, but usually people who have ADHD, uh, they'll struggle with that kind of processing, their right. short-term memory where it, it collides. Um, we have uh, those of us who can remember the lyrics of songs we heard when we were 15. That's right. But can't remember what the conversation we just had, the name of the person we just met. That's right. No, that's exactly it. So we have a, a semantic memory subsystem. That's like for uh, facts, where we store facts. There's mm -hmm. no narrative tied to it right. whatsoever. Lots of times, it's a story we tell ourselves, right? That that we remember things. Right. Um, or not remember things if we're feeling isolated, like uh, people who've been struggling in, in lockdown, for example, mm -hmm. or even people who might struggle with depression uh, and they have a hard time connecting with, with other people for whatever reason that is in that moment. Um, you know, they might get stuck in a, in a victim kind of mindset. And then what they can do is start telling this narrative and recall old memories through that filter and actually create new memories through that filter uh, from a victim mindset. And you, you create like Ooh, false, false memories, memories. Mm, correct. That's dangerous. Yeah, yeah. So our brains are totally capable of this, right. of creating false memories, of creating false realities, of creating um, any kind of uh, false situations sometimes, depending on that narrative or depending on that story. So I've learned through a lot of help from a lot of really highly qualified people with a lot of letters after their names, right. um, uh, different ways to figure that out. And so, you know, there are three kind of steps to taking in information mm -hmm. and, and, and storing memories in our subsystems. We encode it, we store it, and we retrieve it. Okay, like yeah. a computer. Like a computer, but we can't upgrade our memory. <laughs> <laughs> right? Like a computer, you can just put more, more RAM in. You can, Maybe you could exercise a little bit. Like you can a, exercise like, it. Like a muscle. Just like a muscle. And so as we do that, as we exercise that, we create new neural pathways. And so you've heard things like, oh, it takes 21 days to change a habit. Right? Yeah. We've, heard, we've heard things uh, like that. Or 10,000 hours. 10,000 like hours, something like that, right? So what we do with repetition over and over again um, we will actually stimulate those neural pathways. As we stimulate those neural pathways, there are more electrical impulses, our myelinated sheaths get thicker, we get more protein synthesis in, in, around those neural pathways. So you're saying there's actually a physical change a physical inside of our change. brains yeah. uh, as a result of, inside uh, of, 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 of what we could do. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Hmm. The quality is, it's called neuroplasticity. But let's talk more about this because this, yeah. uh, this is what I really want to get to is yeah. you, you've gathered all this knowledge about how memory yeah. works and uh, uh, where, where it's stored, but how can we use that information to make ourselves better? Yeah, so uh, the cool part about it is we can work on things. I recommend three months for people to pick one thing, a technique okay. that you want to improve on and then move on to another technique. So we can do things like um, 
We can do things like mnemonics for remembering certain things, okay. right? You, you use that. Uh, lots of times you can use things like bilateral stimulation. Cool. So what is that? We have two hemispheres, and remember I said it stores information in chunks. Mm -hmm. So if we are activating as many of those um, uh, neural pathways as possible, and we can get bilateral stimulation back and forth, left hemisphere, right hemisphere, if we can use multiple senses, um, then it helps us remember things. So one technique is a shoot the thumb technique, and it's really fun. Yeah. Okay. Sounds fun. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Sound, well, actually, sounds painful. But go ahead. <laughs> no. So what you do is you you hold a memory in your in your head, something you want to think about and and you want to recall and you want to remember, uh -huh. and you shoot your your thumb. Okay. <laughs> you shoot your thumb back and forth okay. and back and forth while you're holding the memory. And this means that we're using both sides of our brain as the data pass back and forth. And as you're holding on to the memory, in fact, you will remember things more and you will have really? faster data transfer across those those hemispheres and, and more connection for, for information. Let me make sure I understand. This is the, I've never heard of this before. Mm -hmm. The mm -hmm. idea is that because I am using both of my hands, you have physical that forces me to use both parts of my brain, yeah. and therefore any information I process during that time, well, that as you're remember, thinking as well, it because will be, it's, will be it's a, also... Here, a chunk over here and a chunk over here. Over right, because it's also the process of holding the information. If you're just doing it and you're not really thinking of something, okay. that's not going to add that bilateral stimulation. Okay, I'm going to try the, this. The cool part about this. this is that as you do it, other data go as well across those neural pathways and uh -huh. so you're really building up um stamina almost memory stamina this is of, like a muscle right so it's like a muscle yeah also uh we like chunks we like chunks so as humans we store data in chunks um we like uh chunks informate of information stored using cadence using tone um uh, different kinds of senses right mm -hmm. our sight sound smell uh all of that uh it's interesting to note, though, that if there are too many stimuli, right, if there are usually an average of five or more, okay. then a confused mind says no. It's overwhelming. It's overwhelming. So in marketing and advertising, right, for me, I'm a brand strategist. I've been in marketing and advertising for a really long time. Um, this is where we did tell people and kind of dissuade them against making websites that are busy. Yes. Too busy. Too, too many things for the, the viewer to take in simultaneously. That's right. And so your, your brain will kind of glitch and start going, oh, no, I don't want to look at this. It's too much. Okay. Loud sounds. That's why people like rock and roll. Rock and roll is a very simple uh, form of There's music. There's a cadence to it. Yeah. It's, it's, it's a lot of repetition to it. Right. Yeah. You know what it's going to, uh, you know what to expect, yeah. right? It's, it's predictable. It's harder to listen to jazz or classical. It's not, right. not that it's not good music, but it's just harder to Especially that progressive it's stuff where yeah. it, you have sharp sounds yeah. or the saxophone. It takes, it takes a while to understand it. Yeah, that's right. That's right. Buddy or, Harley, anybody can that. Oh, right, right, <laughs> right. Or the the other thing is phone numbers. So this is why when we have phone numbers, I mean, you've you've done this before, okay? You somebody says, "Here's my number." You get your pen, you get your paper, or you get your phone, whatever. You're right? old school, yeah. Right. You get your phone, and you're ready, and you go, "Okay, all right, I'm ready for the phone number. Go yes. ahead." And they go, "All right, um, uh, it's uh, seventy-two." You know, um, um, 555, <laughs> 12, 12, and you're like, wait a minute, no, your phone number. And they go, yeah, that's that's that phone number. Unless you said three, three, four. Everybody, right? Seven zero two five 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 one two one two. Everybody knows that's how you deliver a phone number, right? Unless you're a psychopath. Like, I don't. <laughs> so the guys on Car Talk used to make that. Oh really? So here's our phone number, and they say it with like the four, four, and then oh right, four, and then two digits. <laughs> and it makes your brain go, wait, what? What? You start to twitch a little bit. Yeah, yeah. So that, those are some ways that you can do that. And the more that you do that, the more that you deliver information, the more that you repeat things, um, you know, if the signal is strong enough or repetitive enough, okay. we're going to remember things better and it improves our memory. Uh, that's more about pattern matching. You know? Pattern matching, sure. There's another one that's association. And so in my workshop, we talk about building a mind palace. Okay. And we put everything together that we learn at the very end, and we spend the last hour building a mind palace with um, our memory, just like Sherlock Holmes. And okay. so <laughs> it has to do with association. 
And so um, if you can uh, take in some information and attach it to something that you already know, that you already have learned, that you already are familiar with, then you're much like, more likely to remember it because mm. you've associated with something. This is where um, experiential learning comes in, where they tell kids if you've been studying in certain conditions, like maybe you're wiggling, maybe you're um, wearing your favorite lucky hoodie I mm -hmm. talk about in my talk, then um, you know you should take your test in the same way, in the same conditions. If you're listening to music right. while you study, you should take the test in the same kind of way um, because the association of that um, well, this I have heard of, that if, uh, if you study well, like if I always study in this corner of the yeah. table, but I always eat dinner in that corner of the table, then right. I, it's better for me. I, because right. I, I, I learn better because I just associate sitting in this chair. Yeah, and, our, and memory is learning, right? Yeah. And so this is what they say with sleeping as well. They yeah, say, d don't d eat, don't do don't watch certain things, and... watch TV in, in your bed because your bed is for sleeping. Yeah, yeah. Well, mostly. Yeah, mostly. <laughs> Exactly. It's a PG-13 show. Right. <laughs> All right. Cool. What else? What else are we learning? I'm learning a lot here. Right. No, I love. I love it. Brains are really cool. Brains are really weird. And you know, I um, learned about all of this stuff just because I have come overcome a lot of trauma in my life, and so my brain has this quality where I can. Um, isolate certain subsystems and memories okay. and um, they just you know don't have any kind of co-consciousness whatsoever with with them so it's called dissociative identity disorder I can dissociate uh, in different situations okay. and so like once you learn that quality I learned it really really early at a young age and once you learn that then that's just your go-to coping strategy okay. so that's kind of what I learned and for me um, I developed all you know separate little parts to, to deal with certain situations so when my brain gets a stimulus my body and my nervous system go oh we know what to do in this situation here this is how we're gonna respond okay. and so our, our brains are totally capable of this this is how we yeah so in some ways that was good because it helped you cope with some trauma Totally. In other ways, it's uh, it, it means that parts of your memories are isolated from other parts of memory. Totally. So it's hard to uh, yeah. bring them together. Yeah. Well, I've done a lot of work um, on that, so that's really good news. Mm -hmm. And in fact, as I uh, learn to you know integrate those parts and get more co-consciousness co with those different parts, uh, it, there's some fun things that happen. So, like I forgot, it took me a couple of weeks. Um, I picked up my uh, Xbox and I started playing Mario Kart and it was like I had never played before oh, okay. because I had a certain part of my, yeah, <laughs> of my, my you, you, this part of your brain learned how and now this part right. turned off. So once that part integrated then um, I picked it up and for two weeks my kids could beat me in Mario Kart and they loved it. It was great for them. <laughs> they loved it. I was like oh this feels weird. But once again after that pattern happened and I kind of forced my brain over a two week period then suddenly those neural pathways get stronger and stronger, and then I can kick my kid's butt again. And you <laughs> Wait, you, so you forced good. your brain by doing what? By playing, by playing. Oh, yeah. okay. Yeah, and even that, though that I didn't sort of want to. This and part, so it, the leak it's, into that part. <laughs> that's right, and so slowly I got better and better and better. Right, exactly, and then it kind of picked up again. Yeah, exactly. Okay, um, well, uh, I think we start talking about memory, and I think yeah. the number one thing people want to know is I want to improve my memory. Yeah. What's the number one thing people can do? To the number function? one thing to do is to reduce interruptions. The number one reason that memory, that people forget, is interruptions. Mm -hmm. And so I just, you know, offer a really simple tool it's one of these right here. Okay. And so when my kids run into my office, when a coworker comes in and goes, hey, can I have five minutes? Right. Because as developers, that's not what happens. It's never just five minutes, uh -huh. especially because you're juggling all these balls, right? You've got all these different layers. And as soon as somebody says, can I have five minutes? Well, no, I just dropped all the balls on the floor. Sure. And now it takes an hour to pick them up back into the correct order. Um, there's been a lot of studies about that. It takes an hour um, to get back into flow. And so interruptions, we can reduce interruptions by going, just a moment, let me finish this text. Let me finish this email. Mm -hmm. Hold on, I just gotta make this quick call. Let me not 
let me write this down before I lose the thought, right? I'm writing my memoir and so I'll have a thought mm -hmm. and so I know that I have to get it down right away right. and if somebody comes, I say, just a second, I okay. need to get this thought down, otherwise it'll be gone forever. So setting those boundaries is important and I would, I would suggest that even if there's nobody else around, setting those boundaries to yourself. Because, well, with social uh, media. If you're, yeah, if you're like me, I'm easily distracted. Easily right? distracted. Even if I'm alone. Even. <laughs> Ding, oh. my phone just, uh, oh, That's somebody right. just tweeted something. That That's could right. be interesting. <laughs> right. Right. And we're all like that. We're, we're wired that way. Squirrel. Right. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> what was that? And so interruptions are the number one reason that, that we forget. We can have proactive uh, interruptions or retroactive interruptions, um, you know, where we forget things like in the past and all we can remember is the current thing or vice versa, where we're trying to remember something uh, in the current right. and all we can remember is the past. Like right. I did this when I moved. And so I would drive to my old place, just well, be on that. autopilot, yeah. <laughs> right? Yes. Yeah, yeah. Um, I know you do like all day workshops on uh -huh. this, and uh, this yeah. is just a short show, but is there anything yeah. that, that we feel we really should cover that we haven't talked about yet? Uh, you know, I just really want to always impart to people to uh, give themselves uh, the grace that maybe they might extend to their family, especially right now. We never know what somebody is, is going through, yeah. right? And so if we can just uh, treat ourselves gently, that comes from uh, one of my dear friends, Nancy Gabriel. She's one of the best mediators in Nevada. She taught me to treat yourself gently um, because what happens is if we're treating ourselves harshly, then guess what? We're short with other people around us as well, and we're treating them harshly, very likely as well. So treat yourself gently. Um, you're only human, you know, <laughs> and we all have have mistakes all the time and unintentional things. The, the best way is to just quickly apologize or to quickly deal with it as soon as possible, um, instead of delaying that and, and carrying out the discomfort because we're, we're just trying to avoid the discomfort. But then. That becomes 10 minutes, two hours, two days, two years, yeah. and it can really weigh heavy on us. And we tend to take that out on ourselves. It'll turn into depression and that shame, you know, sometimes will get taken out on other people too. I can confirm everything yeah. you said is true. And forgiving <laughs> yeah. yourself is sometimes hard. That's essential. it. Give, give ourselves the grace that we'd give others for sure. Christina, mm -hmm. thank you so thank much. Thank you. I appreciate it. Use technology to build your personal brand and make new friends.